Now we're going to allow the action script code from our Swift file to play. Then we're going to add a button that will take us back to the original screen. Notice that I've changed how I am calling my load portfolio. When I was doing it with on enter frame, it would reload it with each frame, which was causing problems with the Swift file. So I'm just calling it load portfolio. I've declared my portfolio loader outside of my function so that it's visible in other functions, so that it's not constrained by scope to just the load portfolio function. And in this function, now you see I've got the variable defined up here, portfolio loader, and we're going to load our Swift, add child so it's on the screen, and load it into the child. I have a new function. This is, we're calling it here. We want to make sure that it's the Swift portfolio is loaded before we try and do anything with it. So once it's loaded, it calls the Swift portfolio function. Here I have a variable main timeline. Now I reuse this in each of my scenes because its scope is only within this function. Movie clip equals movie clip portfolio loader dot content. By doing this, I make it treat the Swift file as a movie clip. It's not loaded inside of one, it's just being treated as a movie clip, which lets the action script quote code in the Swift run. Then I've added a home button calling the go home function. For it to work properly, I need to remove the child, the portfolio loader that I loaded, or it will still be on the stage. And then I go back to my main screen. Let's try it. They do all work. I've only let loaded a return or home button on one scene. I want all of your up to this point, and you'll see that it works just fine within here. And then this removes the child, takes me back to the main stage where I can work with my other options. So create a menu of the files you've created so far. Enable them so that the code can play by treating them as a movie clip. And on each of those scenes, have a button that takes you back to the main page.